The ideal gas equation is very useful in a wide variety of instances, and it's fairly accurate for most normal cases, but it is unfortunately only an approximation. And approximations always have limitations where they start to become really bad approximations. For our ideal gas equation, that's gonna be true at low temperatures and high pressures, and even in some cases where we have gases like water vapor, where there's very strong attractions between the molecules themselves. So our solution in these cases is going to be to invoke the idea of real gases. And so we're gonna to need to build a model for real gases. Our model is gonna have two pieces. We're going to now allow molecules to have volume. According to the ideal gas picture, they don't have any volume. And we're going to allow them to have attractive interactions. And the ideal gas approximation says molecules don't have any interactions. The development of this model comes to us in 1873 from the Swedish chemist and physicist Johannes Diederik van der Waals. And he fixes both of our, our missing components in the ideal gas equation. The first thing he does, he fixes um, our ideal gas equation in order to give molecules volume. Now the ideal gas equation, if we solve for volume, we have nRT over P. And this V here represents the space which is available in the container for molecules to move around. And we saw if we cut that space in half, molecules would have half as long to complete their journey before they would collide with the walls of the container. And so we would have twice as many collisions and that would double the pressure. So, so this volume is inversely proportional to the pressure. Well, in actuality, the molecules themselves take up some of the available space. Let's say they take up space B. Now in this picture here, you can see the molecules um, are freely wandering around as a gas. And let's just for visual purposes, say that we collect all of them except for one in the bottom of the container. Well, the volume of this region would be the number of molecules times the volume per molecule. And what remains for that one outlier molecule to actually wander around in and bounce back and forth in will be the volume of the container minus n times b. So that's gonna be our correction that we're gonna make. Instead of having the volume be just the volume of the container, we now realize that the, the free volume for molecules to wander around in is actually the volume of the container minus n times b. And that is what should be equal to nRT over p. The next fix that van der Waals incorporates into the ideal gas equation is he includes the intermolecular attractions. Now our ideal gas equation, if we solve for pressure, that's gonna be equal to nRT over V. And remember our definition of pressure, that's the amount of push on the walls of the container per unit area by the gas inside of the container. Now for a real gas, that pressure is gonna be reduced by some quantity by the attraction of the molecules. And here I've replaced V with V minus NB from our, our previous correction. And so what remains is to figure out how to write this term right here. Now to figure out how to write it, let's look at what's happening inside the container. We're gonna split this into two cases. We're gonna consider the interior molecules kind of in the middle here, and then the molecules in the edge of the container. Now the interior molecules, they get pulled in every direction. If, if there's a molecule up and to the left, there's probably also a molecule down to the right. And those combined pullings in opposite directions cancel out. So there's not really any effect we have to consider on these interior molecules. What we do have to consider is the molecules on the edge of the container because they get pulled inward, but there's no gas molecules on the other side to pull them the opposite direction. And so this is gonna be our, our net reduction in pushing when they collide on the edges of the container. And that's gonna reduce our pressure. So how can we write down what this value is gonna be? Well, you know, these molecules are gonna have some average attraction to each other. Let's call that A. Now, the number of these exterior molecules here, that I think it's fair to say is gonna be proportional to the density of the molecules in the container. If there's twice as many um, molecules in the container, there's gonna be twice as many edge molecules. 
Likewise, the number of nearby molecules which are pulling these edge molecules inward is also going to be proportional to the density of the molecules in the container. If there's twice as many molecules in the container, then there's going to be twice as many molecules pulling these edge molecules inward. And so our reduction in pressure is going to be equal to whatever the average amount of attraction is between molecules, and then it's going to be proportional to the density of molecules in the container twice, once because that tells us how many edge molecules there are, and then again because that tells us how many molecules are pulling on those edge molecules. And so now we will add that term to our equation. The pressure is now equal to nRT over our corrected volume, B minus NB, and then we subtract this reduction because of the, the inward attractions. Now this gives us the van der Waals equation. Now this is the traditional way of writing it. I have moved the uh, reduction in pressure back over to the left side of the equation. So now it has a, a plus sign instead of a minus sign. Uh, but this is PV equals nRT, and you can see there's just a correction to the P term and a correction to the V term. Otherwise, it's the same equation. And so we can use it exactly the same as PV equals nRT. If we know how to use that equation, we know how to use this equation. The only caveat is now we got to look up what A is and what B is for the particular gas that we have in our chamber. And be careful here in your units. Make sure they all work out and cancel. Remember, so in this model, um, A, that represents the average attraction per molecule. So our, our pressure overall gets reduced by those attractions. And B represents our volume of individual molecules. And our, our volume gets reduced by the total volume of gas molecules in the container. Now the reason we need to use this is it gives more accurate results than the ideal gas equation. And usually at one atmosphere pressure and 300 kelvins, you know, normal pressures and temperatures, it's not such a big deal. We'll get pretty much the same results either way. But differences can become significant, especially at low temperatures and high pressures. In those cases, we're going to want to use the van der Waals equation instead.